Raise your voice. There are some prayers you don't pray. Being gentle. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Karo boko sotoro bobo. Kashe tere boko sotoro bo. Kere ba 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 ba. Come on, raise your voice. Declare and say, I will never remain the same. Declare Psalm 46 over your life. Say, God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Pray that prayer. Therefore, my heart shall not fear. No matter what is happening. It says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. I shall not fear. That school fees, I will not fear. That house rent, I will not fear. In the name of Jesus. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Come on, raise your voice in faith. All over the campuses, raise your voice in faith. Thank you, Jesus. Who can deny you a crown? Lord of love Lord of love I that you were crowned Lord of love You were Lord of love Who can deny that you were crowned You are the ancient of death Who can deny you were mighty hand somebody father we thank you for those testimonies we thank you thank you for those ones you've done that have not been shared we give you the glory you are the one doing these things no man can do that 
we give you all the glory. Thank you for everything you've done. This morning, Lord, speak your word. Let your word come like hammer. Let it come like fire. Let the water ability of the word of God be made manifest. Let nobody remain the same. We decree and declare that the unhindered word of God we preached this morning. Jesus, since you inspired the writing of the word, inspired the teaching. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Walk up to six, seven people and tell them something is going to happen to you this morning. It will start happening from now. You are not walking up to six, seven people. Rejoicing like this, something has happened. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Be seated. God bless you. God bless you right by. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 2.14 Thanks be to God. <laughs> Who sometimes? Always leads us in triumph. In Christ. He always does it. Your DNA always wins. That's why Paul says, fight the good fight of faith because you won before you started. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us. We didn't take it. Now, I'm not... Preaching against faith. You know this is a faith church. There's some things you take by faith. But I'm telling you, I want to teach you today what you do that God will give you victory. But it gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not through the cliques we belong to. It will use people. Not through those we know. No, it will use those people. Not through the university I went to. It will use your education to position you. But it gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 58, the Bible says, Therefore, beloved brethren, be steadfast. No matter what happens, be instant in season and out of season. Be immovable. Always increasing. No matter what happens. Whatever the devil tries to do, don't reduce what you do for God. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing 
that what you're going through is a film trick. <laughs> Give your job to the devil, he can't do it. He doesn't need a job. Give your marriage to the enemy, he doesn't need marriage. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let's start from Matthew eleven twenty eight. I've always told you this scripture, but let's start. It says, come unto me, all ye, or, or you who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Humanity was heavy laden after the fall of man. Humanity carried the load they can carry. That's why you see all over Africa, you see demons putting loads on people. <laughs> I have a mentor. Somebody entered his office to receive prayers. He saw on his head a coffin that he was carrying. Without praying, he just saw it. Ah, what is this? All around, and he's rich. But he had a burden, something he was carrying. I command in the name of Jesus. I do not suggest, I command. Any evil load, let the owners carry it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is all you who labor. Think about that. You labored before you got out of school. Not work hard. You, you, you struggled. Your work is more than the result. You struggled before you got a job. Even after getting the job, you are living from hand to mouth. Those who are heavy laden, he said, I will give you rest. Don't forget that. This is not theory. You were called so that Christ will give you rest. There remains a rest for the people of God. For the gospel that was preached, that the spiritual was, was preached to them. But they didn't mix faith with it. So it didn't profit them. There are a lot of people who go to church. The thing we are preaching, the gospel does not profit them. There are a lot of people that have been in church for a long time. They look with one eye like, what are you saying? They calculate things. They celebrate their situation more than revelation. Instead of them to ask questions, why is it not working for me? Why? What is going on? You join the bandwagon of people that say, these pastors are thieves. Not everybody is a thief. <laughs> not everybody. Is particularly if you see a church where everybody is educated, the ministers cannot be following you if you're a thief. It's not possible. It's not possible. I don't have to come here to read to you uh, last Sunday how every was. No, there are people watching those things. Bank officers are in church. They are watching those things. Something is wrong. Syndicate slaves said the house is dark. But they discover later that he was blind. She was blind. Wake up. God called you to give you rest. But in verse 29, it says, take up my yoke. So Christ has a yoke. Take up my yoke upon you and learn from me. If you don't learn, you will not enter the rest you've been called into. you just be a theoretical victor. You will say, I've been in church for 30 years. You'll be bragging. You know why you are bragging? Because there is no result. You don't need to talk. Now, when I talk like this with passion, it's as if I'm attacking you or preaching negative to you. No, I want you to wake up. Bible says, as it spoke to me, Ezekiel 2, 2, the spirit came into me. I want something to enter into. In verse 2, the Bible says, and it got me on my feet. I want something to get you to stand up. I want something to get you to work on tomorrow, even after the service. To change something. He set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke with me. As he spoke. Not uh, telling me what to, you know, what, what to do to stay in bondage. To get out from that place. Somebody must be angry after the service. It's as if it's a command. Be angry. <laughs> do you know there are some things you can't come out of if you are still negotiating? Be angry. But don't sin. Okay? Don't let your anger, don't say, hey, my grandfather was poor, my father was poor. No, I must stay woke. No, don't do that. Stay in the word. But be angry. 
If you have one person to blame, you will never come out. Don't blame anybody. Put responsibility on yourself. Okay? Take up my yoke and learn from me. I know you're a professional doctor. You're a professional lawyer. But you remind me of somebody who, is, who was playing basketball. Now, wants to play football. Do you know that what you do in basketball that earns you goal is foul in football? You have to learn. It's a new life. You are not 62 years old in the spirit. You are a baby in the spirit. You have to learn. You know, I teach you to respect people. But I'm telling you, if all you have is that you came to the world before somebody. Job said, I thought length of life was wisdom. People genuinely just don't know some things. Yesterday, I was talking to the leaders all over the world, people in Manchester. I was talking to them via Zoom. And I shared the story of one of my mentors that I had gone to preach for before. You know, <laughs> places where people just steal your things. Children don't know anything to do than to steal. And they don't steal to hide. They steal your chair and they, they sit down in front of their house. And if you go there to say, ha, why did you steal? They will say, we need chair in our house. I need a chair. So I took. <laughs> one day God told one of my mentors, God told him, hmm, all these things you are building will go on there. He said, Lord, what should I do? He said, take their children. He began to teach them. I, I preached there. He's going to be with the Lord now. In the village, he had computers. He was teaching French in the village. Recently, I went to a mentor's house. I saw one of those children. He recognized me. Because I went there in 2002. He said, Pastor, you don't remember me. He said, he said, you came to preach in so-so-so place. I was a child. You know what they did? They distributed them to Nigeria. Not to make them house help, but to help them, if you want to help them. So they went to university. When I saw him, his shirt was tucked in. He changed because he learned. Oh, I remember that in primary school, the older ones, 14 and above, did graduation for finishing primary school. They celebrated it. Take my yoke and learn. Problem is, most churches are not learning centers. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, you will find rest for your souls if you learn. I was teaching the workers here, and one lady raised up her hand to say, I've been through many things. I said, listen, I don't know your story and I sympathize with you. But you know that God had warned you about some things. You are here today, you are crying about a failed relationship. Did you follow God all through? You are crying about a failed business. Did you follow God all through? Did you do what he told you to do? Why are you blaming him at the end of the day? This is the problem. You make your decisions and when you muddy the water, you come back and turn, you know, live now spoon. You turn, you turn everything around and still blaming the person you didn't listen to. One of the things I wanted to leave the service with is do be wise in your own eyes. Don't. If you are wise based on the way you are raised, if you get their results, don't blame God. If you coordinate your marriage, coordinate your business the way you want, then why are you blaming God? Father, I attended Koza on Sundays. Uh -huh. Did you learn? There are people learning nothing. They just come to church. They've made up their minds what they wanted to do. I remember when I wanted to come to Abuja. You know, I said to God, wherever you tell me to take, I will take. It wasn't more than 30 minutes that God spoke to me. There are people that hold an opinion and they go three days fasting and they held an opinion. And God doesn't see anything because it's not a nuisance. Okay? So you must learn. 
after you are saved, you must learn. See, salvation starts from the time you are saved. Salvation is not going to heaven. Sozo, soteria, means you are savage from everything you've been dealing with before. The things thriving in your family, you are yanked out from. So we have a lot of theoretical victors who don't listen to Christ. Paul brought a revelation. You cannot see Paul called Jesus without putting the Lord in front. Curious, go and study it. It means someone who tells you what to do. Lord Jesus. It was Paul that started it. Lord Jesus. When you hear a ministry say Jesus is Lord, it means in this place, it tells us what to do. That's the meaning. Curious. It actually means a dictator. Someone who tells you what to do. So we have a lot of people in church right now that are saved, but Jesus is not their Lord. They do what they want. They do what they feel is good. The, the ones they don't feel, mm. You have friends that say things to you outside the word. And you thought, oh, if I just pray, if, once you live here now, you go to a mountain. Once you live here now, <laughs> after the mountain, you go somewhere else. You think that's how God will hear you. And I'm not knocking off those mountains. I'm not knocking off any place you go to. God didn't ask Cain, who made you angry? Go on, go on read it in Genesis 4. He said, why are you angry? Why? He didn't say who. He said, why? And why is your countenance funny? I love verse 7. If you do well, will I not accept you? And Cain didn't say, how should I do well? No, he knew what to do. Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Everybody should say, excuse me, sir. How can we get the knowledge? No, because you have rejected knowledge. They knew what to do. But they rejected it. No, no, no. I don't think it's right. You don't receive things from your head. You receive things from your heart. I don't even know where to turn right now. I'm telling you, it's so simple. Now, I'm not there, but the little I know is working. Now, I bragged one day, I think it was last week, I said, if you leave this church, you will miss me. You know why? Nobody's calling you. We have a need. Nobody's saying something. Nobody's pr pressuring you. <laughs> you don't have to divide your tithe into 10. Nobody in stress you will say, eh, he paid 100 million, which means he has 1 billion. Let me ask person. No, nobody. You miss that. You miss that. Nobody is calling you. You have to. Ah, you have to. You have to do this. No. If you don't help us, we'll, we'll go down. No. No, you didn't send us. Okay? In Ephesians 4.20, thank you guys. Ephesians 4.20, Bible says you have not so learned Christ. So Christ is learned. Believe me, Christ is learned. Ephesians 4, verse 11. Quickly, I'm going to come back to this Ephesians 4, 20. He himself gives some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints. The learning, the preparation of the saints for the work of ministry. And when you stand in your place, I stand in my place, the body is edified. The Bible says every joint must supply. Is not what you think. It's not, oh, I want to go to that church to take from that superstar pastor. No, everybody should, every joint should supply. I'm supposed to equip you. And I'm praying from my heart this morning that before you leave this place, you'll be a tough meat for the enemy to chew. In Ephesians 4.20, Bible says, you've not so learned Christ. You've not so learned Christ. In verse 21, Bible says, if indeed you have heard from him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. They asked Bishop Oedeko, how did you make this happen? He said, the truth. You know the meaning of that? The truth. 
when you study the Bible, what happens to you is the truth. You discover the truth. I'm the head and not the tail. Facts will tell you, Oga. <laughs> okay, if you are not the tail, you are the head. Pay your house rent. You don't even have a house. You don't even have a land. I went to Ibadan one day. The person I went to preach to said, Pastor Bildo, my friend, I couldn't go to Lagos in the days I was in London without branching his house. He was so poor, he was struggling. But he stayed in the world. He was a good Christian. He said he wanted to show me something. God had given him a house. Oh, when he showed me the master's bedroom, I was on my face. I thank God. I said, Lord, thank you. Now, I did that. I didn't have a land. That was a few years ago. It doesn't matter. The first person to be rich in your village is not the richest right now. It doesn't matter. What matters is, are you doing the word? If you're going to church, make sure you are actually going to church. If they see you read the Bible, make sure you're actually reading the Bible. If they see you pray, make sure you're actually praying because the results will come. Can somebody shout hallelujah? <laughs> if you've been taught by him, okay? As the truth is in Jesus. Some of you don't have even offering right now. The truth is you are rich in Christ. That's the truth. I'm telling you, the devil knows what I'm saying. Demons know what I'm saying. In reality, do you have money? No. But what's the truth? Is in Christ Jesus. You have to be taught by him. In Hebrews 5 verse 8, I'm getting somewhere. Hebrews 5 verse 8, though he was a son, the problem with a lot of people is that they are taking the message of grace the wrong way. Although he was a son, you say, no, I'm a son of God. I'm made in his image. I don't need to pray. I don't need to do things. No, 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 no. That's wrong. <laughs> Although he was a son, yet he had to learn obedience. You have to obey God. What's the truth? What am I expecting you to do? Do what you are told to do. Finish. Raise one leg, shout amen three times. <laughs> Prophetic instruction can come, but I'm telling you the truth. Uh, somebody walked in through the aisle and said, stand up. God said to tell you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's Hebrews 13 verse 6. You don't need to, I know it already. You don't need to tell me. Your phone number is 0, zero. You don't know your number. Call MTN. <laughs> That's not the reason why church exists. You have to learn. You have to learn. I remember the first time I woke up at night to pray. I didn't have a problem. I learned from somebody. I went to sleep in my pastor's house as a student. A student pastor who was in 200 level. I said, wow, people wake up to pray. Then I tried it. I learned. Some people are learning nothing. The way they came is the way they will return. That will not be your portion. <laughs> that will not be your portion. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things he went through. By the things he went through. That thing you're going through right now, I've told people many times, I can't share enough testimonies. Anything you're going through, make sure you quickly learn what God wants you to learn so that a time of refreshing can come again. There's no devil anywhere that can stand where God stands. I'm telling you, there's no devil anywhere. We take authority, that's not wrong, but we, you don't take authority over someone that is above you. Even angels are servants to you. Philippians 2 verse 5 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Have this mind that you have to learn obedience. Christ didn't die for you to live anyhow. Grace is a teacher. You have to learn something. It doesn't matter where you started from. I like to give this example. I came in through that way. You came in maybe through this way or that way. It doesn't matter. Since we are here, we are exposed to the same thing. 
It doesn't matter if you were raised in Karoma Gigi or, or so. It doesn't matter. You are here on earth. You have to start making decisions that will stand you out in that community. I pray in the name of Jesus. If one person will make it in your family, and I know you'll make it, it will be you in the name of Jesus. In Acts 3.22, Acts 3.22, for Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. From your brethren, him you shall hear in all things. Him you shall hear in all things. Him you shall hear in all things. Whatever he says to you, that's a secret of success. Not one of the secrets of success. Listen to me, I'm not just preaching a sermon because it's Sunday. I'm telling you, listen, any true pastor will be frustrated by some results. And I don't claim I'm there yet. You know, people think, oh, why is he talking like that? Is it not our offering? Like, no, <laughs> no. Any real pastor that knows the truth will not depend on offering. What I give you will not sustain you. What you give is what will sustain. That's what the Bible teaches. So if you're a pastor, you think everybody should worship you, everybody should give to you, you have missed it in that area. <laughs> if you're not a giver, oh, you will never have, no matter the crowd. Some people think if you have crowd, you have money. No, you don't know that more people, more trouble. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. God says, when you brought back your harvest, I created a hole inside. He said, when you brought back your harvest, I bleed away. Ha! Agai chapter 2. Go and read it. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are receiving will be enough for you. Enter into the realm of more than enough. He says, a prophet like me from your brother. Him you shall hear in all things. Whatever he says to you. I love the next verse. Verse 23. It shall be that every soul. Somebody say every soul. Every soul. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Who will not hear that prophet? shall utterly be destroyed from among the people. That's the reason why people are not entering. That's the first message of Peter, preaching about Jesus. Is that prophet. Thanks be to God who give us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, do what I say. I have not seen, nor hear heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man what God has made ready for those who love him. In other words, there are some things prepared for those who do what the Lord says. Whoever hears the sins of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. Whoever hears the sin of mine and does them. Remember, hears. They go to church and they don't do. <laughs> they hear all the time. That they don't. I beg, finish this among me, we hear a song, I beg. That's the reason why people are on the spot. Or you hear, you do half. You leave some. The word of God is like a departmental store. You pick some, you, mm, I'm not doing some. He <laughs> said, whoever does not hear that prophet will be destroyed among the people. You shall not be destroyed. Yeah. That amen is not correct. Yeah. That amen is not correct. Yeah. In Hebrews 2 verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect this so great salvation? How shall we escape? How shall we escape poverty? How shall we escape penury? How shall we escape oppression? Some people are from some families where they have to put oil and sacrifice and bury 10 cows. That practice has ended. So all the children in that family, they are struggling. Because in the family, they used to worship demons. Now you are born again. You are born again, you come to church, no doubt, but you still are neglecting some part of salvation. How shall we escape? 
Bible says we have escaped like a bird. It says the snare is broken and we have escaped. You shall escape. That amen is not correct. You shall escape in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you from my heart. Anything that the enemy is ravaging, the people of your skin, people of your color, people from your generation, people in your family, you will escape in the name of Jesus. God wanted to destroy the whole earth. Noah escaped. You shall escape. Psalm 124 verse 7 says, Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. Do you know who a fowler is? He doesn't hunt anything on the ground. He hunts things that are flying high. In the name of Jesus. They've said envy comes with, with increase. I pray in the name of Jesus. Envy will never bring you down. I say envy will never bring you down. In the name of Jesus, God will surround you. In the name of Jesus, the word that you do shall answer for you. In the name of Jesus, 1 John 4, 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world because greater is he, that's Jesus, that is in you, than he, that's the devil, that is in the world. Whatever. Bible doesn't say whoever. It says whatever. You have got little children and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than him. First John 5, 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever means including your brainchild, your vision, including your company, including the idea, whatever. Not to talk of you, your idea. Whatever. That idea is a world overcoming idea. But this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. But the question is, how does faith come? Faith comes by obedience. It comes by the word of God and corresponding action to the word of God. That's faith. That thing you are doing, you're not doing God a favor. You're not doing pastor a favor. That thing you are doing in the secret, you are doing yourself a favor. Bible calls faith a shield. A shield. In other words, what ravages everybody of your color, you'll be shielded. Faith is not being positive, I'm telling you. Faith is corresponding action to what you believe. If you believe God answers prayers, why are you telling people more than God? If you believe that, if you give to somebody, oh, somebody doesn't have a shoe, it came to your office. The shoe was, was Bobby and Bobby Brown, in case you don't know what that means. Google it. We used to Bobby Brown in those days. The heel was like this. You don't need to say, uh, brother, do you need something? No. Um, with dignity, just tell your peer, pack it something for him. With dignity. When you do that, you will never lack. That's what the that's the truth. You will never lack. That's what the Bible says. You see something is wrong in the house of God. You just go say, What's in be my own? I bet. But somebody stays back and says, hmm, I need to do that. God is not just blessing me for fun. Don't wait till you have to be. That's the truth. Quietly, on your own, just do it. I was in a fellowship one day, and God said, look around. There's no work clock here. How much do they say work clock? But to me, a student, it was a big deal. I didn't have money. Remember, I just gave my life to Christ. And God said, after this fellowship, buy it. So I went to the supermarket outside the school. I saw a wall clock that was small. I could afford it. I wanted to and God said, no, give me the best. I bought it and I went back to give pastor. Pastor said, ah, kneel down, Abby, kneel down. And he blessed me. 
I'm telling you the truth. I went home that day knowing I didn't have money after buying that stuff. But I knew in my heart that obeying God, I had peace. Your prayer life will go to another level. Everything about you will, will go to another level because you've obeyed God. <laughs> this is the secret. I'm telling you, this is the secret. What about forgiveness? I will never forgive that person. Huh? <laughs> it's like you are taking poison and expecting someone else to die. It can affect your health. It can affect everything about you. In fact, can I think he used to do three days meeting? He will use two days to preach on forgiveness and last day to do healing meeting. In fact, from the first two days, people are healed. Release people. Do the word. You that person struggling with your wife or you that wife struggling with your husband, do the word. You'll be shocked how you will push the devil out of your family. That thing you are struggling to have will come to you. Do you know that Noah did not run out animals? They came to him. That's the design of God. God is able to make all grace come to you. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Give it to me. God is able to make all grace. In fact, give me amplified version. It explains all grace to you. God is able to make all grace, every favor, an earthly blessing come to you, not you run after it. Come to you in abundance. In abundance. He's able to do it. He's not telling you what God is doing. He's telling you if you trust him, that is what he's able to do. I pray in the name of Jesus. Never again will you live consistently in penury. The God that made a way in the middle of the sea shall make a way for you. Never again will you live a life depending on people. God will do your own for you. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, let them have. You are made to have. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, receive your own. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, after the death of Moses, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. It seemed to me he was a son of nobody. Moses' assistant, what did God say to him? Verse 2, God said to him, Moses, my servant is dead. He did. Get over it. I'm here. Your mentor can die. Never put your pastor in the place of God. Never put a mentor. We respect them. We honor them. Things flow from them. God does not bless from heaven using men on earth to bless men. We know that. But your mentor can die. God cannot die. Therefore, don't be faithful to a human at the detriment of the word. Don't do it. It won't work. In fact, if you're a pastor listening to me, people can never give to you until they've given to God. Paul says they give themselves to God and to us. You can't. You'll be a psychophant. I can't trust you if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Hello? Now I'm getting to the message right now. <laughs> no man shall be able to stand before you. No man. You know some secretaries are gates. You bring a proposal to the boss. They will throw it somewhere. They are gates. They, they block you. No man shall be able to hinder you. No man. No matter how many there are. No man shall be able to stop you. All the days of your life. And let me tell you something. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I saw to their fathers to give to them. I thought what God, in fact, all my life, I thought what God was saying was, Joshua, be strong. If you are not strong, you can't give these things. You can't divide the inheritance. Be strong. Be bold. But I read verse 7 yesterday. 
and I changed my life. Only be strong and be very courageous. To go and fight? No. To go and take territories? No. Be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do according to the word. See, it takes strength and courage to do the word. You know it. I don't need to preach it to you. To throw away that key, to delete that number from your phone book, it takes God. It takes courage. Because that's the person sponsoring you. So where will you turn to? That's the business you've known all your life. It takes courage. And God told him, no man shall be able to stand before you if you do the word. Eh, you go to this prayer mat. You have this Baba, you go to... You. If you do the word, no man shall be able to stand before you. Everything will be in place. Pastor Beardo, we know Christians. See, stay with yourself. You don't know what people do. Stay with yourself. Stay with yourself. Okay? Only be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it. Don't turn from it. Don't say, eh, 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 he likes me. I like him. Mm, don't turn from you. See, if your recipe is wrong, your cake will be wrong. Don't turn from it, Joshua. That thing I told you in verse 5 will come to pass. Don't turn from it. Don't turn to the left. Don't that, that, that. You may prosper wherever you go. I preached a sermon many years ago how to print money, any currency, wherever you go. Wherever you go, that you may prosper. Now, Listen to me, I prophesy, I'm not suggesting that from today, now people don't believe in it, but I will say it. Begin to prosper wherever you go. May you not be stagnant in the name of Jesus. May you not be on a spot in the name of Jesus. See, your legs were created to move. They are bed sores that will grow from your body if you're on a spot because you are made for movement. Your legs don't face backwards, they face forward because you are made to go forward. Anything that is designed or concocted to keep you on the spot, I stand against it in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus wipe out any stagnation in front of you. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. Only be strong. Do you know the meaning of only? You don't have two things to do. Pastor Beardo, I need to take an extra course. It's good. You know I encourage you to do that. Pastor Beardo, I need to join. This as, there, are, there are people that will recommend you. See, only. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to turn. Only. Only. That's the only thing I want you to do. Not two things. One thing. Try it. Please allow me to say to you, say to your neighbor, try it. I'm not talking about you saying, okay, I'll be celibate for three months or a year. No, that's what I'm saying. Don't do, in fact, let me, let me read to you. Only be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do some. Now, Listen to me, we are not in the Old Testament that you say, in the first commandment, second commandment, anything God puts a finger on, take it out. Anything he says, that's why we pray every time. That's why we pray every time. Isaiah was already a prophet when Uzziah died. He was already prophesying, a major prophet. But the year King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. You know what he said? He said, who is me? Go away from me. The more you are familiar with God, the more you see that, ah, I need to deal with this. Anything God tells you in the New Testament, do it. Don't follow the doctrine of the enemy because you'll be shortchanging yourself. The devil knows, according to Ephesians 6.16, that you can quench all the fiery dart of the enemy. All the fiery dart. Above all, taking the shield of faith. 
with which you are able, look at the word able, to quench. Oh! You had a dream yesterday night? You can quench it this morning. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, you are ignorant to something? The devil attacked you? You can bounce back. You are a demon frustrator. You are not a cat with nine lives. You are a cat with many lives. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, I will bounce back again. How does faith come? By hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. That is what you don't need. There are people here that don't read the word of God all the time. I hope I'll be able to get there. Verse 7. Joshua 1, 7. Joshua 1, 7. Only, only, be very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right that you may prosper where you go. I love verse 8. This book of the law, remember, look at me everybody, Moses died. Did he leave his rod? No. He didn't leave his rod. He went with his rod. So imagine Joshua. What will he use to do miracles? Do you know the name Joshua and Jesus are the same? One is Hebrew, one is Greek. You are the Joshua generation. Those who speak to the mountain. Those who don't need rod. Look at me. Look at me, everybody. Everybody, look at me. All the days of Joshua, there was no manna. Because he crossed over in three days. What Moses could not do in 40 years. Talk to me. There was no manna. Because when they crossed, manna ceased. What is the miracle? Most things you call miracles are just the mercies of God. They are mercy drops. What God wants for you is not healing, it's health. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. The word of God should create a picture in you. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm telling you, wake up. Quit blaming somebody. I've been in this church for 20 years. What has church done for me? No, if you prosper, you will not be waiting for what church has done for you. I'm telling you, God wants to bless you. This book of the law shall not depart. Am I preaching the gospel that you don't have challenges? No. I'm saying to you, you can move up. People should see you after a while and say, wow, I expected that. I expected that. I challenge you, start doing the word. Okay? Start doing the word. Don't just come to church. Tell your friend after the service, or more, after pastor preached, I won't change. I won't try this thing. Whether he's a liar or he's saying the truth. Jesus is the truth. I'm telling you. What you are depending on or what you are living your life with is facts. Facts are not true. You can imagine if I was driving to the junction there, I saw that a man has died. And as a pastor, I packed to pick the man. Suddenly, SARS police appeared. He's the man. He's the man. He killed him. But is that the truth? No. Okay? So truth is diametrically sometimes opposed to facts. You know what they said to Jesus on the cross? If you are the son of God, come down from that. Is that the truth? He's the son of God. You know what the devil told Adam? The day you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. He was already like God. From the beginning, let us make man in our him. He didn't know. Nobody told him the truth. But he had facts. When you live by the truth, you'll be shocked how your life, it won't happen tomorrow. But your life will begin to move. This book of the law, shall, oh, I will teach on it on Tuesday, shall not depart from your mouth. 
When last did you speak God's word? Some people only pray in the morning. Some people don't pray at all. But some people only pray in the morning. The Bible says, you shall meditate day and night. I don't climb the stairs to come here, keeping my mouth shut. Why? How? Who did this to me? <laughs> that will make me keep my mouth shut. I will declare what will happen. In the name of Jesus, as I preach, fire will come out. That's what will happen. It may not happen to you. It will happen to somebody. <laughs> maybe, maybe you are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. <laughs> I don't care. But somebody will hear God's word and say, wow, this is me they're talking about. Is your word not like hammer that breaks the rock into pieces? As I'm climbing the stage, I declare in the name of Jesus, as I preach in the name of Jesus, every investment of hell shall be broken into pieces. And that's what will happen day and night. Let's go to Psalm 1 because of time. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. See, sometimes ungodly are not physical beings. That suggestion in your heart, that thing that tells you, no, I won't do, and I won't go there again. I won't do that again. <laughs> I won't do that again. I won't, I won't pray. I won't even pray to God for six months. Huh. How will you survive for six months? How will the fish survive without water? Because when fishes wanted to be made, God called the fish out of water. When trees wanted to be made, God called the trees out of the ground. You want a tree to stop living, don't cut the branches. Disconnect it from the ground. You want the fish to stop swimming, disconnect it from the sea. You want the star to stop shining, disconnect it from the firmament. You know what God did when he wanted to make you? He spoke to himself. He said, let us make man. You want a man to stop shining, disconnect him from God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And you are saying, you are threatening. Where did it come from? You know what God told Adam? Who told you you are naked? Who told you to, to say that? I won't pray for sin because my mother died. What were you looking at? Do you know everything that happened? We don't know. And I'm not saying your mom was not good. We don't know everything that happened. Now we know you. Get up. And do what you got to do. I don't even know where to face. <laughs> In Psalm 1, blesses the man that doesn't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. That thing you're about to do after the service, who inspired it? That thing you're about to do tomorrow, who inspired it? Counsel. There are many counsel in a man's heart, but the answer of the tongue belongs to the Lord. In the, in the heart, counsel. Look at that girl. Hmm. Say, in the name of Jesus, I won't look. <laughs> I had a friend that told me, when I see girls, I see the cross. I see the cross. <laughs> many years ago, I see the cross. You know what David said? He said, place your curse on me. If my eyes behold evil, he trained his eyes. Come and talk to me. Yes. Not stand in the path of sinners. How do you coordinate your relationship? Can we say you are Christian? The way you handle it. So God has blessed you to make you a sinner. Hmm? When things happen later, you say, ah, oh God, and I pray. You didn't do what he said. You did what you wanted. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Not sit with the scoffers. Do you know sometimes where you sit can deplete you of the grace upon your life? There are some people, when they say some things, I just stand up. It has happened to me more than 100 times. I just stand up. You know what my friend told me? We were talking one day. I said, 
if I was the one the person said that to, I won't even see anything. He said, he said to me, I know you. You won't see anything. Or just, hmm, you can't go to hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. You can't go to hmm. There are people who have said things against me. They cannot quote anybody saying they have said something against them. You think I'm weak? No. Because of someone. Learn it. If you, do, if you want long life in your life, mind it all. I don't have time to show you this scripture. Whoever hides, whoever says something about his brother in secret, him I shall cut off. Okay? Verse 2. The devil is smart. He was with God before. He knows what can affect you. You are, you, there's nothing you can do. You're already the head and not the tail. But you can do something to cut off that blessing from your life. That I will not do. Did you notice that the Bible talks about the things this man does not do before he starts talking about the things the man does? But his delight is in the word of the Lord. When does he do it? He meditates day and night. To meditate means to mutter words. Yes, Lord. I'm different to my family. I'm the head and not the tail. I, I'm saying this because that's the baseline. <laughs> I'm above only. Only, only, only. I never come down. I'm above only. If you are celebrating this, when you come tomorrow, I've changed. My path is like a shining light. Do you know what I did? I took Proverbs 4, 18 as my number. Car number at some point until some people started having problems with private numbers. So I changed it. Everything about me, Proverbs 4, 18. Listen to me. The next time you see me, you will see a new glory. No I'm telling you, no matter what happens. Why? Because I've plastered my life with that scripture. What is the light? Psalm 1 verse 2. He meditates in a night. Verse 3 says, it shall be. Did you notice the Bible does not tell us where it's coming from? But Bible tells us where we end. Did you also notice no name was mentioned? Because your name is applicable. It shall be like a tree by the rivers of water. It brings forth its fruit in its season. It has no God there. It's fruit. In its season. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. How can you not build when you're supposed to build? Will you keep quiet? No. No. Does it happen? Yes. So, one day God wakes you up and says, build. Not because you are perturbed. You are, he said, be careful for nothing. But one day, he tells you, to somebody, to anything happening around you, God speak. He says, Build. Or God can bring it as a gift. I'm telling you because it brings forth its fruit in a season. Whose leaf does not wither? <laughs> My last son told me, he said, Daddy, ah, how come you have this number of things? I said, because I don't spoil things like you. <laughs> now he's still growing up, so he outgrows things. I've, I don't grow again. I don't outgrow things. I said, any new thing means the old thing. The leaf does not wither. The leaf does not wither. I pray in the name of Jesus. Your leaf will not wither. Amen. Your leaf will not wither. Amen. People will not see you and say, ah, what happened to you? How? No. When they see you, no matter what happens, they will say, congratulations. Amen. I prophesy by the time what you're going through is over, you and God will be standing. People will not gather to, to say sorry to you. If you believe it, shout seven amen like fire. Who's leave? Who's leave also shall not wither. Look at this. Whatever he does, prosper. Everything is involved with prosper. Have you seen that before? We don't have many Christians like that. But the Bible is truth. Did he join an association? Did he 
All he did was he meditated on the word day. Now, when you are meditating, God can tell you, call this person, do this, do that. Okay? He's inspired by God. But all he does is the word. How can you have a Bible? Some don't even have Bibles. They only come to church and see this. They go to church, there's no notes, no Bible, nothing. They're not billion Christians. No. They don't search the scriptures. If the pastor likes, let him preach lies. If the pastor likes, let him preach the truth. They will only accept what their head tells them. No, that man appealed to me. No, no, no. Sometimes it doesn't appeal to your head. It appeals to your heart. Say after me, whatever I do. From today. Will prosper. Remember, whatever you make happen for somebody, God will make it happen for you. Jesus said, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it. The reason why you've been wanting to take and nothing has been coming is because you didn't lay anything down. <laughs> you only do things that pays you. You don't sacrifice for anything. In Proverbs 11.24, I need to round off. Proverbs 11.24. There is he. Nobody's name was put there. There's one who scatters yet increases. That is the truth. You can't build a ministry on this and say, I'm teaching people on prosperity. No, it's normal. It's normal. That's what the word says. There's he. That's scatters. Yet increases. Watch poor people. I'm sorry if you're going through something. They don't give. Oh, they can say, oh, ah, we like what that man did. But they don't do anything. How you will know is the little you have starts. And when I have, ah, if I have like that person, I would do is a lie. I've not had before, I have had before. You, if you're not, you can't be a lizard in Nigeria and be a crocodile somewhere else. It's, if it's not your DNA, it's not your DNA. Talk to me. There is one who scatters. That is why I never give to someone that is not a giver so that your seeds will not die. Someone in this church gave something to someone and went back to that person to say, ah, I need one of the things. Ah, the person said, no, you can't take it. That tells you what kept him where he was. And the person came to tell me, I said, forget it, just move on. It is not what people give to you that will sustain you. It's what you give. Listen to me. Bible does not say where you sow, you will reap there. It says when you sow, you will reap. Not where. So, such and such person may not be nice to you. It doesn't matter. You can imagine how far the devil has worked on somebody that even when you hear the truth, it doesn't sit well. <laughs> That is why Christ cannot perform the things he ought to perform in our lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that after this service, the devil will cry for it. Your prayer life will go to another level. Your study life will go to another level. Victory all the way. In the name of Jesus, no evil shall come around you. You shall be far from oppression. In the name of Jesus, God will help you. Pray in tongues if you believe it. Come on, raise your voice. That's how to do it. Pray like you are praying to a living God. I'm out of time. Oh, be strong. Be strong. That's the only thing to do. Be strong. I can't hear you. You're not praying like a strong person. Be strong. Be strong to do. I don't know who damaged you. Be strong to do. I don't know who lied to you. Be strong to do. Come on, pray like your life depends on it. Don't form big boy having big problem. It's time to pray. Ask for grace. 
Leave the devil. Leave the devil. Ask for grace. Ask him to help you. Begin to press strength into your being. Ability to do. Don't only pray in tongues, decree and declare. So I can never remain the same. If you are sick in your body, begin to command health. Declare that you will walk better, you will talk better, you will do better, you will stand upright, you will do better in the name of Jesus. Command your blood vessels, command every organ on your inside to obey the word of the Lord. What does the word say? With long life, I will satisfy you. Come on, speak the word. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Command all within you. Now begin to command every crooked to be made straight. Every crooked to be made straight. Everything that hung down, hang up right now. Begin to pray. Anything that the devil is using to access your life, be out of your life. Don't even wait till the end of the service. Receive what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Apply the blood of Jesus to your life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Say after me from today. My life begins to move up. In the name of Jesus. I'm exactly like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bear my fruits in my season and whatever I do will prosper. My leave will never wither in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I love the Lord. I love his word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Come on, give the Lord a hand, somebody. Is that for the Lord? Come on, celebrate him. And ask the people around you, tell them, a change has started in me. Say, the word is working mightily in me. Say after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was buried for me. I believe that on the third day, he was raised from the dead. I believe that right now, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Therefore, everything he did by his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, I receive today in my human spirit. I'm born again. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a hand if you believe it.